Sorry about that. I didn't mean to start off just like that. And, oh shit, fucking hell. Hold on. There, it should be fixed. Now. Hopefully. Well. To people who aren't normally seeing this, this is... Uh, this is an SCP ranking stream where I took every gear SCP and I'm basically going to read through them and rate them. Whether the reality been destroying, world destroying, can basically destroy uh, only up to a continent in power, only destroy up to country in power, only destroy up to a city. Only goes after a certain people, only goes after one person, or whether or not they should be reassigned. Well, let's go ahead and get started to the first SCP. SCP colon three dash J. And yes, I'm starting with joke SCP, I know. SCP colon three is a highly virulent mimetic ancient spread primarily via written especially electronic text when exposed to scp 3 subjects are compelled to seek out an infected individual and ask what scp 3 is once explained to subjects enter the second stage of scp 3 infection it which point they begin to insert duplicates of SCP-3 in written and typed text, uh, sensibly to portray emotion. SCP-3 is polymorphic and has been documented in over-redacted redacted unique forms. Subjects will gradually develop variations on the standard of SCP-3 forms, and spread those in the standard method as outlined above. Infected subjects will invariably enter the third ter terminal stage of SCP-3 infection, wherein SCP-3 progressively replaces all forms of textual communication. There is no known cure for terminally infected subjects at this time. SCP-3 was first encountered redacted by the O5 Council. Hmm, that's... Okay, so even though it's a joke SCP, saying this description... I think I will put it in a certain group. Hold on, let me see if I can find the fucking picture. There you are. Don't know. S Boom. It is done. Alrighty. So, what's next on our list? Ah, uh, here it is. SCP zero zero five dash J dash EX. SCP zero zero five dash J dash EX is a carno hazardous meme. It consists of the idea of a joke or humorous anecdote will remain funny once it has been explained. When instances of SCP 005 J EX arise, all remnants of humor and irrelevant joke are completely data expunged. The following are extracts from the test vaccine laws for D class personnel testing positive 
for SCP-005-J-EX. D4698, you heard me say it was a duck, because that way... Get it? It sounds like you're crying. Boo-hoo, boo-hoo. So then I say. Okay. So it looks like. Yeah, this is just literally saying jokes are. It doesn't even sound harmful. It's just that jokes. You know. Are net being are dangerous, which they aren't. So, reclassification, or reassigned, in my opinion. Okay, so, hold on, what's next? 006-J, let's see if I can get to it. Hold on, everyone. All right. Description. SCP-006-J is a collection of insectoid creatures that researchers agree are scary as balls. We're pretty sure it's a medic, but we're sure as hell not going near these things. I saw, I think I saw a stinger on one. Discovery. I'm just walking up to a hallway to my room when I look in the corner and see SCP-006-J dash redacted. And this thing has a gigantic fucking eye. It's just staring at me like, I'm gonna fucking eat you. And I just, and I just get the fuck out there. <laughs> Addendum 006-J. Guys, it isn't even that big, okay? Look, I'm going up to it, and it hasn't even attacked me, attacked me yet. Dr. Redacted. Dr. Redacted has promoted to Site Director. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Reclassification. Yep. Reclassification. It's just a. It's just like literally just a fear of bugs. That's all. Yeah. It's zero fourteen dash J. All right. All right. SCP 014 J takes the form of an antique dare fork, well worn and as near as can be estimated, not clean since the 1890s. The object is fashioned from electro plated nickel silver. Typical of the suspected period of its manufacture, and the rightmost time is bent, protracted degrees outward. Brown stains and mold adorn the prongs and pits of the decorated parts of the handle. Analysis of this material seems to indicate that SCP-014-J was last used as some form of beef. SCP-014-J was moved to this facility in the early 1970s and seems, for all intents and purposes, to be an entirely mundane dinner fork. If it is possessed of any extraordinary qualities, these are known only to those in the very highest echelon of this pro project's coordinators, whose representatives assure us that SCP-014-J is, quote, very important. 
officers who spent a lo- time alone with SCP-014-J are unanimous in their appreciation that the object is of great significance, though none can quite s- say why. No tests on SCP-014-J are authorized. Any personnel observed to compromise SCP-014-J in any way are to be terminated at once. Note, I request that this SCP this has to be decommissioned immediately. It's too dangerous to be kept alive. Agent Spoon <laughs> request denied. There is no evidence of, of any immediate threat. It says it has no immediate threat. Reclassification. Man, I'm actually going through these a lot faster than I thought I would. Jeez. All right, what's next? What's next? SCP-016. Ah, this is a long one. SCP-016 is a blood-borne pathogen recovered from mine worker in Redacted, who injured himself while working at a deep coal seam. Said wound became contaminated with coal dust from the mine, possibly infecting the worker with dormant spores. Over the next several days, SCP-016 proceeded to infect the remaining employees at the mining camp, as well as the CDC crisis team dispatched to deal with the epidemic. Foundation personnel then took over the infestation and terminated all affected personnel. Patient Zero was brought into captivity, and the mine shaft was collapsed by an explosive device. SCP-016 has an incubation period ranging from 24 hours to 2 years, depending on the presence and number of human, other human hosts in the area. First symptoms resemble the common cold and including itchy eyes, running nose, cough, coughing, and body aches. That sounds a lot like COVID. Oh shit. Phase 2 begins in 48 hours and consists of a controlled form of hemorrhagic fever as the organism causes a small small amount of blood to become aspirated in the lungs, creating an aerosol effect. During Phase 3, the host crashes and bleeds out, bleeding profusely from every body orifices, including the nose, tear ducts, skin, pores, mouth, uh, and mouth. Blood pressure skyrockets during the final stage. Hosts have been observed projectile vomiting blood to distances of over 5 meters. Should host survive this near total exhaustion, the pathogen will become dormant once more, returning to incubation phase. What distinguishes SCP-016 from other strains of hemorrhagic fever, such as Ebola and Marburg, is an unusual response to high stress. Should the subject undergo a high stress situation, the organism will change its survival tactic from rapid Reproduction to rewriting host DNA and s- stimulation to rapid cell division. Major, major psychological changes occur within the first 24 hours, with a complete body reconstruction occurring with two weeks' time. Most hosts do not survive the process due to heavy demands made on the body. Interesting side effect of transformation is increased 
aggressive urge. It is believed that this may be an attempt to maximize the spread of the virus in a manner similar to rabies. On another note, subjects who undergo body transformation no longer appear to exhibit SCP-016 hemorrhagic properties. However, subjects affected by transformed hosts will still undergo the normal SCP-016 infection process. This one's a toughie. I'm going to say city, mainly because it doesn't sound like it's progressive as fast as other viruses are. Looks like it takes some time to do it, so, and do, go through all its phases and, and make more spread. So, I, I think it should go to city, not country. But definitely above a certain group, because holy hell, that's terrifying. Let's see what's next. All right, zero seventeen. All right. SCP-017 is a humanoid figure approximately 80 centimeters in height, animatically similar to a, to a small child, but with no discernible identifying features. SCP-017 seems to be composed of a shadowy smoke-like shroud. No attempt to find any object beneath the shroud has been successful, but the possibility has not been ruled out. SCP-017's reaction to shadows cast upon it is, to, is immediate and swift. SCP-017 leaps at the object, casting the shadow, and completely encloses it in its shroud, whereupon it returns to its normal size, leaving no trace of the object behind. Oh. Damn. Um, I'm going to put it over only one and put it in a certain group. It, it's not as deadly as the virus, but if multiple shadows pass through it, it will literally consume them. So I think it'll be that. But like, a lot of shadows would have to come over it to be city dangerous, in my opinion. Like, everything in here, this is my fucking opinion. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. SCP-019 is an X. All right, this is a, a long read as well. Oh, sorry. Uh, SCP-019 appears to be a very large ceramic face, 1.8 uh, meters in diameter at the mouth and 2.4 meters high. Style and decoration indicate it was created in classical Greece, although conclusive dating is impossible, as the surface is entirely unbreakable by any known means. If a successful method is discovered, SCP-019 is to be destroyed with prejudice. Sorry. Periodically, entities emerge from SCP-019. Collectively, these are known as SCP-019-2. 
The entities vary in many aspects, but tend to be small, vaguely humanoid, and extremely hostile. They often choose to attack with teeth or claws. Although very delicate, they are reasonably strong and posing a thorough threat in large numbers. When kept in zero degrees Celsius and totally at at rest, entities will emerge from SCP-019 at a rate of approximately one per entity per hour. The following traits are known to affect SCP-019-2's manifestation rate. Movement of SCP-019, threat to SCP-019, extreme temperature highs and lows, sudden shift in surrounding environment, introduction of objects or organisms, to the inside of SCP-019. Traits that may or may not influence SCP-019-2's manifestation rate, presence of human life near SCP-019, current weather patterns, specific individuals near SCP-019. All right. In addition, tipping or tilting SCP-019 will create a reaction as though it was previously filled with SCP-019-2 specimens. Although viewers looking into SCP-019 from above will merely observe a dark hole. Due to the uh, production rates of SCP-019-2, when object is disturbed, measurement of the internal cavity is difficult, but it is suspected to be inconsistent with the outside measurements. Hmm. Fuck. Hmm. Even though they said they were freaking weak, like, if it actually is knocked over, they'll get swarmed and a lot of people will die. I'm going to put it at city because in large numbers, they can literally do a lot of damage. That's the only reason. All right, what's next? Zero two zero. All right, let's see. SCP-020 is a fast-spreading fungal organism that is capable of affecting the senses and behavior of living creatures, including humans. Samples of SCP-020 exhibit an unknown effect that renders them effectively invisible to direct observation, even when under a microscope. SCP-020 is only visible to humans when viewed through photographic or video surveillance. Once SCP-020 forms a colony, usually within a human residence, it will produce spores that will affect the behavior of humans around it. Infected subjects will increase the heat and humidity through their homes to create an environment more suitable to the growth of SCP-020. Affected sub subjects also become more sociable in many cases and often invite acquaintances to their homes to further spread the or organism. And as the spores and mold colonies are visible to affected subjects, 
the mole may sometimes grow directly on living subjects. As the spores and colonies within a home approach critical concentration, the health of affected human subjects will rapidly deteriorate, cause, resulting in death. Further spread of the mold may occur as the bodies of any deceased subjects are encountered by emergency responders and healthcare agents, as well as transportation of the bodies to local morgues. SCP-020 was first encountered and redacted, where an undercover SCP agent noted, a, noted dramatic personality changes in, in personnel working at the local hospital. Upon investigation by a containment team, it was discovered that almost redacted civilians have been affected, as well as the majority of the town. The civilian population was terminated and the town incinerated under cover of a local flash force fire. Today, over 12 outbreaks of SCP-020 have been reported. Investigations are currently underway to determine the source of these outbreaks and possible preventive measures. Okay. Okay, so it looks like this is going to country. The reason why I explain that is because it's dangerous, but not as dangerous as continent, but it is going multiple places easily and infecting people a lot quicker and faster than the virus that we previously talked about. It is much, much more dangerous much more hostile. So, that's why I think it should go to country. Okay. Uh, zero two one dash P T. All right. This is probably I don't. This is probably the longest one I'm probably gonna have to read. All right. SCP zero two one dash PT. It's a marine time iceberg that was adrift towards the coast of Brazilian state of Santa Catarina. The object's initial sighting occurred when it moved th through the southernmost uh, lithograph region of Argentina in Uruguay. Vessels that navigated the Antarctic and Atlantic Ocean spotted the object and related strange melodies echoing from within. The object was secured by the Brazilian Navy and shortly after transferred to the Foundation custody, SCP-021 PT was towed and anchored in the Antarctic Ocean and is currently stationary state has since been unaltered by oceanic streams. It is observed that SCP-021 PT has Has a singular entry point that leads to the glacial Lapa Cavern. Hold on. There it goes. Sorry about that. This formation is predominantly horizontal and possesses a unique room which is directly connected to the entrance of a type of man made structure. Resembling a structurally fragmented theater, this st structure is symmetrical and sim semicircular, 
such as a Pathere lodges three galleries and is occupied by approximately 170 instances of SCP 021 PT 2. The totality of the architectural elements, with the exception of those extensively used by SCP 021 PT 1 instances, exhibit signs of freezing and lack of maintenance with small areas completely ruined due to exposure, the proscenium and patriae are divided by the irregular rupture with 20 meters in diameter and 50 meters in depth. Inside the structure there are currently five instances of controlled humanoid entities with this lack of nasal and ocular cavities interfacial features dominated SCP-021-PT-1. Currently from A to E. SCP-021-PT-1 instances are comprised of vitreous crystalline material similar to ice. These instances were clothing that is has been adapted to the climatic conditions of the region, which is cognate to their presented functionality, human psychological capabilities, although they do not require the maintenance thereof. It is noted that SCP-021-PT-1 instances are generally fabable and are capable of communicating in English, Italian, and French. Their abilities to expertise are varied but normally connected to artistic performances in fields, but have demonstrated knowledge in specific and complex elements of society such as culture, creed, and habits. SCP-021-PT-2 appear to be comprised of the same substance as SCP-021-PT-1. These instances are present in the state of stasis and seem to be suspended only during program performances about the area designated as SCP-021-PT's auditorium. It is noted that SCP-021-PT-2 instances are dressed in styles cognate to the region in which SCP-021-PT was sighted there about before its containment. SCP-021-PT-3 appear to be comprised of the same su substance as, as its one and two counterparts. These instances exhibit extremely aggressive, openly hostile behavior towards SCP-021-PT-1 instances, during which SCP-021-PT-3 instances will continuously vocalize unintentional sounds ranging from 80 decibels to 150 decibels. SCP-021-PT-3 instances have lethargically and erratically as if it's suffering epileptic convulsions. They possess an extraordinary capability of plasticity, often altering their physical structures as a means to increase mobility and cause harm. Notably, their mandible appears to be detachable and has been served widening at angles of 90 degrees. While extremely adaptable, SCP 021 PT 3 instances possess weak physical resistance, although they are capable of remaining active even when the deficiency of crucial appendages, such as their head or thorax, when damaged or destroyed. These instances accelerate a rate of vicious crystalline substance that when in content damage appendages from 
dash three instances will generate these organisms to try and fuse them into new constructs or amalgamations. SV021 PT 1 are invariably psychophysically conditioned to perform compulsory in the three sessions duodenal, vespertine, and nocturnal, with variable duration and content that sporadically through the weekend. At the end of, the, of each presentation and event, SCP. 021-BT-A or B will occur depending on the quality of the artistic performance, which is judged by SCP-021-BT-2 instances. Type A events occur when at least two-thirds or more of the instances present in the audience demonstrate positive quality of satisfaction towards the executed performance. Type B events occur when at least two-thirds or more of the instances present in the audience demonstrate negative quality of satisfaction towards the performance executed. In these events, SCP-021-PT-3 instances will continuously manifest from the area encompassed by the rupture separating the areas from the stage and the battery until the moment of the next session. The element of satisfaction, properly said, is arbitrary and measured by the intensity of the oviation formed by dash two instances, which may be demonstrated by expressing euphoria through the applause, producing sounds through unknown means, gifting banquets or and or written messages with a variable content to the artists. Similar reactions, but with negative connotation and denotations, will be produced during Type B events. Any human individuals present in the stage and or in auditory actively or passively interacting with the performance will undergo a transfiguration process. Human tissue will be transmuted into Fritreous substance that comprises SCP 021 PT 1 instances. During this conversion, the individual will suffer from acute pain, usually leading to a state of syncope. Um, although inter interruptible, if the individual is immediately removed from the city, it is otherwise irreversible. That was a long read and the final SCP for tonight. And don't worry, I'll be doing the stream tomorrow and all of the month of September. Um, I believe it's a certain group, since it only seems to be harming the Dash 1 instances. It doesn't say it seems to be harming us, but it is doing damage badly to a certain race, which is not good in the eyes of Foundation, so it will only be a certain group. Anyway, 